so this birthday it's next week on 13th um it has gotten me to a place where i am seeking to find my first love again Hi guys. Welcome back to my channel. It's the week before my birthday and usually before my birthday I have thoughts. So I have been thinking quite a bit and wanted to let you in on those thoughts, but I needed to process them and yeah. So for the last 3 weeks I have been feeling I've been feeling I don't know how to put a uh, a word to it but i've not been feeling like myself i've been feeling like there was a constant heaviness on my heart there was i don't know like a hunger that i didn't know how to satisfy so there is a morning i think about 2 weeks ago i woke up at about 5:45 and i was just doing my bible study and praying um i didn't listen to music that day and i felt strongly on my heart god was asking me to like do you remember how you were when when you first fell in love with me do you remember how how you you really hungered for me and i felt it also that like god was was leading to tell me or even ask that we have lost our first love especially our first love for god and once you lose your first love for god it's easy for you to take take for granted even the other relationships that are in your life and god was just telling me daisy come back and discover your first love i remember when i when i got when i got saved and I was trying to get closer to God. I was looking for relationship with God. I was not seeking his hand cuz I was in high school at that time. I was not seeking for good grades or what. I was seeking to know God. I was seeking for relationship. Like how much time have I spent with God today? But now you find that most of my prayers were God I need this. God I need this. God you promised this. Like it was looking for God's hand and I don't know how many of us have been in that place where you are constantly looking for God's hand rather than relationship with him. So I was listening to a sermon by um Pastor Stephanie Ike Okafor. <laughs> She's a pastor at the Potter's House and she was sharing on the book of Job and You know how you read the book of Job and you're just wondering but God why did you even allow that devil to do this to Job I had always wondered but for the first time while listening to that someone it all made sense so she was sharing that God was having like some sort of council meeting in heaven and the devil just appeared there in heaven yeah and God asked him um what have you been like where have you been Oh he asked him he asked him what do you think of my servant job because god knew that the devil had been had been surveilling job had been looking around and job told him you have you have guarded job on every side i have no entry through like he just shows how god god also shields us even when we don't know like he shields and protects us from the schemes of the of the devil and and god told him okay um i think the devil asked you give give me give me some give me some time with him and let's see what we can do and god said it's okay you tempt him but do not kill him and she ex- she went on to explain that the reason that god did that back story i am um, before all that happened job had had a feast at his house and all his children had come job had been blessed by god his children had been blessed he was he was what was known as a prosperous man he was wealthy in every sense of the word so after the feast and his children had gone back to their homes and what he he said let me make a sacrifice to god in case my children are not walking in line with god so she just went on to explain that job thought that all his success all the things that he had he owed he owed to god because of the sacrifices that he had been making to god he thought that if i don't make a sacrifice god might take away all these things so god was looking for relationship with job not just job thinking that it was the works of his hands it was the works and the sacrifices he was making to god that that were owed 
to his success, that owed to his success. So anyway, the devil comes and starts to tempt Job and all that. And in Job's suffering, in Job's suffering, he was able to discover the true love that he ought to have for God. That God loves me regardless. God loves me regardless. That means that we don't sacrifice to God. That means that that we that we take his grace for granted. But what is more important is that we nurture a relationship with God. Think of the relationships that we have with human beings. Could be your spouse, could be your friend, could be even your siblings. If you don't take time to pour into those relationships, they'll become platonic. You have nothing in common. You sit down there and you're like, we have nothing to talk about because you're not taking time to get to know each other better. God wants us to know each other better. So this birthday, it's next week on 13th. Um, it has gotten me to a place where I am seeking to find my first love again. My first love in God. I've, I never fell out of love with God. But I think I started to seek his hand more than I was seeking relationship with him. And yeah, now I'm in that place. And if this message resonates with you, let's take that journey together. Take time to have some Bible study. Listen to someone. Like get back in relationship with God. Even when you're praying, before you say blah, 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 blah. What is it that you feel about God? You know, when you're telling someone that you love, why you love them like now get back to that tell god why you love him not because of what he can do for you not because of what he can give to you but because of who he is to you yeah so i wrote down some things because i didn't want to blabber on um i think i've shared this before i think in last year's birthday i usually try to do i've been trying to do these sit downs it's now been two years since i started youtube so this is the second time that i am doing a birthday sit down um I've usually towards my birthday you know how in the spiritual work um there are seasons there are times and there are seasons and it's important for us to be aware of the times and seasons so usually when you're making another year that's a season for you personally in your life so i know that for me usually at the end of the season like while we're drawing towards my birthday there's a certain way that i feel and it's not even joy <laughs> it's not necessarily joy um for the most part i would always feel some sort of anxiety and about three weeks ago i think i felt a glimpse of what um people who struggle with anxiety like clinical anxiety how they feel i felt so anxious my heart was beating like I needed to seriously think about how how to breathe and breathe and relax and I kept on reciting the verse do not be anxious about anything but in everything by prayer and with thanksgiving make your request known unto God and that's what I was doing because I felt like oh my god <sighs> yeah so I was really anxious and it just taught me that I need to be in the presence of God once you get out of the presence of God is when you start to feel anxious. When you focus more on other things or what people are doing, you start to feel anxious about the things that are going on in your life and in your heart. And God has taught me that, that once I rely on him, these other things, like I will not be anxious because I know that God has got it. God has got me. I am organizing an event for singles. I announced it, I think, two weeks ago. And it's the first time I'm organizing an event by myself. And I just felt very inept and very inadequate to do this particular event. The first one is Bloom for singles. And my heart just felt, I, was, I felt scared. I think that's it. I felt really scared. And God told me, no, Daisy, just obey. In obedience, I am going to equip you. It's only when we obey that God is, like your heart is humble enough to listen to God, to know what it is that he wants you to do. And he told me, just obey. Despite being afraid, it is not you that is going to do that event. It is me. And he has brought and surrounded me with people that, that are helping me. And we're organizing another event, Mom's Gather also just making sure that it's continuing to be impactful continue to continuing to help mothers is something that we are really passionate about and we ha we keep thinking of different ways to reach mothers and to really really impact them since it's just once a year yeah so when you're praying when you see those things just pray pray for us um another thing i've been doing is redefining friendships 
um, not just having surface friendships, but friendships that really mean something, friendships um, where I'm able to communicate how I feel, communicate how something has made me feel, communicate expectations. That's very important. And also just going on intentional friendship dates. It's something that I want to do this year, like not, not a business meeting, not a place where even us as friends, we are getting to know one another. Yeah, and I, I definitely want to communicate better. I'm looking down because I wrote down notes. I want to communicate better. I find that I, I'm, I'm not afraid of confrontation. Like, I'm those people, I'm not afraid of confrontation. And don't think of, like, the negative confrontation, but I'm not afraid of tough conversations. But when those conversations involve my heart, like, deep, deep down, I know that I love this person, but I'm hurting because of something maybe they might have done. They probably know about it or not. Uh -huh. That one is, is a challenge for me, and I didn't know that until three weeks ago. Um, then another thing I'm learning is to listen to my emotions and not to invalidate them. My feelings are valid. They're very valid because how I was feeling three weeks ago, I felt like, isn't this petty? And I being petty, but God has led me to have conversations with very intelligent people about this particular thing. And, and, and I've learned so much. I think it was something that God wanted me to learn that my emotions are not petty. They are not, they're not insignificant. And I hope that that's a reminder for you, how you feel is important and take time to process it. Don't invalidate it. Take time to process it. If you can have conversations with people who can weigh in and just help you see, uh -huh, okay, how do we do this? And just help you process, then go ahead and do it. And something else I'm learning despite being okay with confrontation i need to take time to think about it i need to take time to pray and to really process how i am feeling yeah um that's about it that's how i am feeling and the thoughts that i have this year towards my birthday i don't even know what we're going to do on my birthday but i'm really excited i just came from a birthday shoot and the, the makeup and all that and it went really well I am grateful to God for the growth that he has given me and being able to be consistent on YouTube, it is not easy. Being able to grow on YouTube, on Instagram, really in my career, the people that he has sent, the favor that he has showed me, I am so grateful. So happy two years to us on YouTube, two years of Daisy Sunshine on YouTube and my birthday, 2024. I hope you are, I hope you're having a good year. I hope that this year you will be more present i pray that this year you will fall back in love with god you will discover your first love yeah happy birthday to me in advance i will see you next thursday next thursday will probably be a birthday vlog we'll see who knows see you next thursday don't forget to subscribe don't forget to like and share this video leave your comments for me your thoughts on everything that i have shared and i will see you next week